Hello and welcome to our summer video to go along with our column that appeared in the summer issue of the Science Teacher. The topic was aligning your curriculum with the ISTE standards and throughout the 2016-17 school year we have taken each of the ISTE standard areas and we've delved a little deeper into them and now we want to take a more holistic view at how you might be able to employ the ISTE standards as a part of your curriculum. Now I'm sure as science teachers that you're very well aware well of the next generation science standards <clears throat> and you're probably already using that to uh, align your curriculum but the ISTE standards can provide uh, another path to make sure that your students are going to be ready for a digital age. So if we go back and we review and you go to ISTE.org slash standards what you'll find are the ISTE standards listed here. We have seven standard areas, empowered learner, digital citizen, knowledge constructor, innovative designer, computational thinker, creative communicator, and global collaborator. And then under each of these different areas, there are four performance indicators. So you can click on one of them. It will display the four indicators and the words that are highlighted and underlined in blue will give you pop-ups that will further explain and define what that term actually means. So as we think about what each of these represents, and we go through like empowered learner, students will articulate and set personal learning goals. These become the identities that a student must take on upon graduation. Like we want our students to be able to say, I am a knowledge constructor, I am an innovative designer. And so I'm gonna share with you some of the work that's still in draft form uh, that we are doing with uh, both our own organization and some other schools that are around us. So please remember that, it's, that this is a work in progress, but we'll, we'll start with um, some digital age posters that begin with I statements. So I am an empowered learner, and that means that I set and explain my learning goals. I reflect on the learning process. I use technology to show what I've learned. I build personal learning networks. I customize my learning environment. And so what we've done is we've taken those standards and broken them down to statements that could be kind of posters, if you want, uh, to hang around the room to remind students what it means to be a, a digital citizen, what it means to be a knowledge constructor, what it means to be that innovative designer and so forth. So I'm going to take you through some of the work that we actually did and then show you how that can relate to the work that you may be doing with the next generation science standards. So again remembering that this is in draft, what we've done is we've taken each of the standard areas, so this standard area is empowered learner and you can see this is our um, first performance indicator, articulate and set personal learning goals, develop learning strategies, leveraging technology to achieve them and reflect on the learning process itself and to improve learning outcomes. So as a group what we did was we took that and we said what are the verbs that are in there and there are some nice activities that you can do where you can ask groups of people to look at each standard area and pick out just the verbs. So we picked out words like reflect, set personal learning goals, and so what are tools that you could use to reflect? And while this isn't meant to be an exhaustive list, one way to do that is through portfolios or through blogging. And then we further list out other tools that you can see. And remembering that this is a work in progress, we've, done, we've started under Digital Citizen. Again, what does it mean to be a digital citizen? So it's gonna be cultivate digital identity and reputation. And then you can start to fill in the other areas. So this might be another way that you could work with your, your groups. And I'll relate this to the Next Generation Science Standards. And if we do the activity that's mentioned in the column, we would do a find and we would say, okay, well, where's the word technology exist? And what you'll see is it builds up very quickly to 92. And so we could say, well, this might be, this might tell us how we're going to integrate technology into our planning. But very quickly, what we realize is that it says connections to engineering technology and applications of science and that's where most of those um, uh, words of technology are coming about and then if I just further down right interdependence of science engineering and technology so it doesn't explicitly tell us this is how you should use technology and when we think back on the previous set of standards the 2007 version there were um, standard areas like communicate and collaborate and so we might say well what about collaboration and by using those truncated words, we're able to find, plan, and conduct investigations collaboratively to produce data and serve as the basis for evidence to answer a question. Well, that helps us identify what, where we might be able to use technology because technology definitely allows us to collaborate um, in many different ways. 
So for example, here you might be able to use a Google Doc uh, to plan and conduct a, the investigation, or you might be able to use a Google Form to collect data at, right in the conduct part and think about using a Google Sheet that again can be shared amongst a group in order to uh, work through the investigation. Well, so where do you get the words that you're going to put up here? What I would say is it goes back to these verbs so that when we think about what the empowered learner is and we say reflect and set personal learning goals, these, and you may not be able to find them. So if we go in here and we say reflect, well, it does turn out that reflect is in there. And so that will work out um, perhaps, again, thinking about reflection. And so right now we're seeing it as it applies to light. Okay, and we go through uh, an object can be seen when light is reflected. So that doesn't really help us in our work. So we'd have to go back to the verb activity and we'd have to then start thinking about personal learning goals and building networks and whatever the verbs may be as we go through. And what I think you'll find is that you're able to start to see connections between the ISTE standards and the next generation science standards and you create activities that articulate both. And what I would say in conclusion is that it, it, what we often talk about in terms of student activities is if you don't assess it, it doesn't exist. And so what we would encourage you to do is to find rubric makers like and my T4L is one place where you can go and you can find um, rubrics. So a rubric maker like this where you start to build out that rubric and we'll just take a look at, at an, um, an example. And you, when you look at the areas, make sure that you include a category that addresses the digital age skills. So that within one activity, we want students to be one of these things, like I'm a digital citizen, I'm a knowledge constructor, I'm an innovative designer, as a part of those lab activities. And that's how you can start to build out those activities that will address not only the next generation science standards, but also the ISTE standards. We thank you for all of your support throughout this year. Uh, we've received a number of notes and comments that indicate uh, the positive nature of incorporating these standards. And we know that these represent what students truly need to be successful in a digital age. So next year, we'll be taking a little different look um, at some, uh, some topics within our column, but the summer is a perfect time to reflect back. And so if you if you get stuck and you're thinking about, well, digital citizen or knowledge constructor, and I want to think about what are some tools that might go along with that, you may want to go back through the 2016-17 Science Teacher articles and videos in order to help you understand tools that might apply in each area.